What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I have a short and simple visual effects tutorial for you. I'm going to show you how you can composite some simple muzzle flashes over live action footage inside of Blender. In the last video, I covered five visual effects for filmmakers, and one of them I mentioned was simple stock footage compositing. So I'm going to cover some very basic stock footage compositing techniques on this channel in Blender as well. And this is one of the first techniques I learned as a filmmaker. Granted, I normally use After Effects for this kind of simple effect, but for those of you who don't have After Effects, Blender is is a good tool for this as well, so I thought I'd just cover muzzle flashes in this video. Before we get started, I'd like to announce that we are having a 35% off weekend sale on all of our Blender add-ons on Blender Market, including City Builder 3D, Chaos, SpiderFi, Light Architect, Cable Cam, and all of our add-on value pack bundles as well. I'll put a link to all of those in the description below, and if you're interested in that 35% off, just use the discount code CYBER35. Anyways guys, let's get started. For this tutorial, to start out, you'll need several different files to work with. The first one is the footage that you want to add your muzzle flash to. So as you can see here, I've just downloaded this off of ArtGrid and I'll be using this one and we'll just be adding the muzzle flash here. And I've also rendered that shot out as a PNG sequence. So that is the second thing you'll need. PNG sequences work better in the compositor because you can control the start and end frame of those sequences a little bit easier. So I've just rendered this as a basic PNG sequence so we can have a little bit more control in the compositing process. And uh, finally, you'll need a muzzle flash and you can find these in a variety of places. You can even use a still frame of a muzzle flash off the internet if you'd like. I do recommend video form just because they generally have some smoke added after the flash which helps sell the effect a bit better but um, I've rendered that out as a PNG sequence as well so that we can overlay it and control the start and end frame of that as well. Those three files should be good for a basic version of the muzzle flash but if you want to follow along the last part of this tutorial I also recommend that you have an image of the blowback of the gun here. So as you can see here I've uh, taken a screenshot of our footage and I've I've painted out the area of the gun which would be blown back when it was fired so so if you know anything about these uh, guns or whatever the slide comes back as a round of shot so uh, what I've done is I've just kind of recreated that and then I've painted in where the barrel would be just so we can overlay this for one or two frames of our shot when the muzzle flash occurs and uh, of course you can also do this kind of effect in 3d if you want to be really precise with it however for most cases the muzzle flash is so quick that just over a few frames no one's gonna notice the little flaws in this overlaid element once you add a little bit of motion blur and everything. So anyways, that's the last element you'll need if you want to do that gas blowback effect. Just create this still image from a frame of your video and then export that as a PNG with an alpha channel so you can overlay it on top of your shot. Anyways guys, let's get started inside of Blender here. To clean up our scene, I'm just going to delete everything in our scene here. And we're not actually going to be using the 3D viewport in this tutorial, we're just going to be using the compositing tab. So I'll just go to compositing and I want to select use node so we can use our nodes. And uh, we don't actually need this render layers. Go ahead and delete that. And I also want to go over here to our view layer properties here and then deselect use for rendering. So we don't uh, render out our view layer whenever we're exporting our composite. All right, so now I'll just import our footage. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to input and I want to use an image sequence. Now we will just find our image sequence here. So we have this one right here and we'll select all of these frames and import them. And I'll press shift A, I'll add an output viewer and connect this here and for some reason it's uh, not showing up correctly and I've had this issue before I'm not sure if it's a glitch within blender but I'm just going to open this image sequence once again and it should solve the issue so yeah I don't know what the issue was there but uh, it's working now so you may have to import your sequence again for whatever reason but anyways now we have our image here and you can see that we can scroll through our timeline a bit so now what we want to do is we want to uh, import our muzzle flash as well so I'll uh, go ahead and duplicate this image sequence press shift D and now I just want to change this one to the muzzle flash so I'll click on the open button and we'll go to our muzzle flash and just select all of these here and open those. And now we want to overlay this muzzle flash on top of our footage here. So to do that, we'll use a very basic add node. So I'll press shift A and actually it's gonna be called a mix node at first, but then we can change the blend mode to add and then we'll connect our muzzle flash to this part of the footage. And now as you can see here, we have our muzzle flash overlaid on top of our footage. However, we need to choose a frame where we want this uh, muzzle flash to occur. Now in this specific piece of footage, the character doesn't actually shoot the gun. So we don't actually see his finger pulling the trigger. So we're just going to find a frame that we think would work well maybe frame 37 or so now to put the muzzle flash on this frame we can just change the start frame to 37 and now as you can see here as we scroll through our footage that muzzle flash is occurring and starting at that frame 
So great, now let's reposition it over our gun. So I'll press shift A, we want to add a distort transform node, add it right before our add node, and now we're just going to use the X and Y values as well as the angle and scale to position our muzzle flash over the barrel of the gun. So I'll go ahead and drag it over here. I'll scale it up to two maybe, so it's slightly larger, and we'll change the angle here so it's matching the perspective a bit. And yeah, you get the idea. I wish we could just drag it around, but uh, unfortunately in this node-based workflow, this is how you do it. So just line it up to the barrel of the gun there though. And as usual, you can be as precise or rudimentary as you'd like, but uh, yeah, that should be pretty good. Now uh, we do want to add some effects to the muzzle flash so it is integrated into our environment a bit better. And what I want to do first is just uh, adjust the colors a bit. I think it's a little bit too saturated for our footage. So I'll press shift A. I'll add a color hue saturation value node here. Add this to our muzzle flash and then bring down the saturation to say 0.8. So now it's just a little less saturated, not quite as orange. And I also want to give it a little bit of blur as it's pretty sharp, you can see here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll press Shift A. I'll just add a very basic blur to it. You can use a variety of blur effects, but this one works pretty well. I'll blur it a little bit more on the Y axis. So it's being blurred, you know, this way. And it's being blurred before our transform node. So keep that in mind. It's gonna blur on the Y axis as it was originally. If that makes sense. But yeah, already that's looking a little bit better, I think. So you can play around there. Another thing I might do is just add a little bit of glow to it. So press Shift A, add some filter glare. We can add the fog glow setting and then bring down the threshold to say 0.4. You know, I'm not sure if that does much for us, to be honest. Definitely uh, adds a little glow, but uh, whether or not it's yeah, I think it probably helps. So I'll just keep it at 0.1 maybe. So it has a little glow there. Cool. So that's looking uh, pretty decent, I think. Of course, there are other things you could do to this as well. But um, this is the most basic form of creating a muzzle flash. You'll notice that if you go a frame before when our muzzle flash is supposed to start, it's keeping the first frame of your uh, image sequence for the muzzle flash. So what we need to do is we need to keyframe the muzzle flash to turn on on frame 37. So I'll go to frame 36 here. And on our add node where we've overlaid our muzzle flash, I'll bring this down to zero and click on I as our cursor is over our factor. And then I'll go one frame forward to frame 37 where we want our muzzle flash to start. And I'll bring the factor to one and then press I again to add another keyframe. And then I'll also maybe on frame 60 or so, even though there's some lingering smoke here, I do want it to fade out. So maybe bring down the factor to zero at frame 56 and then hold I over the factor as well. So now we have the muzzle flash occurring and then the smoke kind of dissipates. But uh, now obviously you really want to have your character pull the trigger and you want him to have some kind of reaction. But um, I wanted to show you the effect for adding the slide uh, blowing back in this tutorial. So I found this piece of footage to be pretty good for that. But uh, just keep that in mind. Whenever you're shooting your footage, obviously you want it, your character to have a reaction of shooting the gun. But um, you know, already this is looking pretty cool. This is the most basic form of this effect. If you don't want to continue this tutorial from here, this would work out just fine. You would just, you know, connect your final composite to the composite node here. And you want to make sure that your timeline includes the frames you want rendered and output. Then you would, you know, choose an output for your composite and render out your animation. But I do want to add a few more effects here to integrate the muzzle flash into the environment a bit better. The first thing I want to do is create a little bit of light on our character's hand here and maybe the character in the background too. So as the gun goes off, there's a little flash of light. So I'll go to add a new tab. I'll go to visual effects and then masking. And I wish we could choose our image sequence here, but we have to open up the movie file instead. Uh, so I'll go ahead and click on open here and we'll find our footage here. Open up the clip. And now what we want to do is on frame 37 for the clip, we will uh, draw a mask where we want the environmental interaction to occur. I'll click on new mask and we'll name this uh, gun lighting. And then I'll hold down control and I'll just kind of draw around where I want some environmental lighting to be. And I'm drawing inside of where I want the environmental lighting to be because I want to feather this mask. So in case you're wondering, all right, we'll try this and I'll select all of these points here and then I'll click on scale feather and just scroll up here a bit. This might need a little bit more feathering, I think. So I'll bring these in a little bit. Select all of our points, scale up the feather a bit more. 
we'll go with this and uh, try it out in our compositor. So now I'll go back to the compositing tab here. And now what I want to do is I want to overlay that mask and then make that part of the footage brighter. So in the node tree, we'll do that after we've added our muzzle flash. So just kind of create a new add node. I'll press shift D and duplicate this add node. And then I will take our image sequence of our footage, press shift D, duplicate that. And then I will overlay this on top of our main shot. And as you can see here, this add node is just overlaying a brighter version of our footage on top of our original shot but now we just need to create a mask to brighten up only the parts of the footage that we want brighter. So I'll go ahead and press Shift A. I'll add an input mask, then I will select our gun lighting mask that we have created. And now I'll press Shift A. I will add a converter, set alpha, and this node is going to tell Blender what part of the footage we want to be overlaid with this add node. So I'll add this to the node tree, and then I want to add the mask output to the alpha input here. And now as you can see here, only the hand is being lit up by this uh, add node here, which is the effect we want. We have a little environmental interaction on our scene and you can create as many masks as you like and overlay uh, and kind of relight different parts of your scene as you desire. But I think for this shot, just lighting up his hand here should be pretty good. And we also want to keyframe this uh, relighting effect as well. So just go back one frame, bring down the factor to zero press i while our cursor is over this uh, node here go one frame forward to frame 37 and increase this however much i want i'll press i while our cursor is over it once again to add another keyframe and i will uh, go two frames ahead this time bring it down to zero and then once again add another keyframe there and uh, i wish we could play back in real time but unfortunately we're not there yet but this is the kind of effect we have right now we have our muzzle flash now, and then we also have our lighting effect on our hand, integrating our effect into our environment. Okay, great. So the final part of this effect is adding the blowback of our gun here. So we'll do that effect actually at the beginning of our node tree before even the muzzle flash starts. So I want to import the image of the blown back slide that we've created. So I'll press shift A, I'll add an input image, and then I'll open up that image here. Here it is, barrel blowback. Go ahead and open it. And uh, I want to go ahead and press Shift A. I'll add a color mix and I will connect our image of our barrel blowback to our mix node. And uh, you can see here that the size of our image isn't the same size as our uh, final composite here, but this shouldn't be too big a problem. What we can do is uh, we can press Shift A. I'll add a distort scale, add this right here, and then I'll change this to a render size, I believe. Yep. So now uh, we can adjust it as it's fully in our frame here. I also want to select this uh, alpha option here. So our blown back gun is overlaid with the alpha channel that we have on that file. And now what I want to do is I want to reposition our image here. So it looks like the slide is blown back. So I'll go ahead and press shift A. I'll add a distort transform node here. And I just want to position it where it would be considering uh, where our gun is in the scene, probably around here, bring it over a little bit. And you may have to uh, rotate it a little bit as well with the angle or scale. I think that's about right. Now, obviously this isn't composited into our scene very well yet. We need to add some motion blur to sell the effect a bit better. So I'll go ahead and add that right after our scale node. So I'll press shift A, I'll add a filter and we'll use uh, directional blur this time. Turn up the distance here a bit to see what we're getting. You can see what's happening here. So let's see, maybe uh, 0 0.05 to start out with. Now you see some blur. Do want to turn up the iterations a bit. There we go. All right, so we have a little motion blur here, but let's adjust uh, some of our settings here. I wanna change the angle, I believe. So let's change the angle until we get it right here. See it lining up a bit now. It's obviously still too much here. So I'll bring down the distance to 0 0.02 maybe, something like that. Now I'm not a big fan of these uh, white edges blurring as well. So as you can see here, without our directional blur, um, I don't know if you can notice, but there's some white edges where we cut out our gun here. So to get rid of that, I'm just gonna add a very basic color key, like so. And now as you can see here, that all disappeared. And now when we add back our directional blur, it's gonna blur just our gun, which is looking a little bit nicer. Now, obviously, um, if you wanna be more precise with this, you need to take out the part of the gun, you know, where the slide would be blown back, but it's gonna be so quick 
that honestly it's I think it's gonna look pretty good but just keep that in mind to do that you have to create a clean plate of the background and everything so in my opinion this should work pretty well uh, it's just gonna be for a frame or two depending on how much you want this to be animated I'm just gonna add maybe one more blur on top of our slide below back here so maybe just a very basic uh, blur node here and I'll just increase it both on the x and y axis a little bit more on the y so we can get a little more blur on the top edge here but uh, yeah i think that's looking pretty good um, what we need to do is we need to keyframe it on and off for this frame so what i can do is for the frame before we can bring the factor down to zero and i'll press i while our cursor is over our factor and i'll go to the main frame here turn it on press i as our cursor is over our factor here and then i'll go a few frames forward here and bring it back to zero and once again add another keyframe here and now as you can see here this is what we have pretty nice obviously if the person pauses it at this frame they're gonna notice something's off but without overcomplicating things this is going to look pretty nice so anyways this is the effect here make sure that your uh, you know color corrected shot is going out to your composite here and that the frames that you want to render it are in your timeline here. So I might just render to frame 150. So I'll just go to 150, change our end of our timeline there. And uh, to render out your shot, you just go to uh, render and render animation and Blender will go through all of your frames and composite all of these nodes and export it to the composite node right here in the output you have chosen for it. Anyways, guys, just a short basic tutorial for you today. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on this channel. As usual, I'll also be releasing some more advanced tutorials as well, but I just wanted to make this short video on this basic effect in case any of you guys were interested. I'll see you next time.